first up, obviously lots to talk about in terms of uh, jabs and COVID passports and the like, uh, all with my next guest, Ian Duncan-Smith, who's a former Conservative Party leader, of course. Good morning to you once again. Good morning, Julia. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. There's so much I want to talk to you about. I want to start off, though, with something that's uh, obviously uh, come in overnight, which is the Chinese uh, uh, banning various UK passport, uh, UK MPs, sorry, imposing sanctions on nine UK citizens, including five MPs, for spreading what it calls lies and disinformation about the country. All of them are vocal critics of China in the UK. This is in retaliation for measures taken by the UK government on Monday over human rights abuses against the Uyghur Muslim minority group. Uh, you are among the MPs targeted. Uh, you've said you wear those sanctions as a badge of honour. Why? Well, uh, all we've done is raise uh, the issue of the, what I think is genocidal abuse of the Uyghur people. You know, there's been forced sterilisation. There's huge evidence for it. The, uh, there's been a, a group of QCs, etc., international as well as domestic, who have looked at this and come to the conclusion the evidence is very clear. Uh, we've been pushing the government to have a court process that allows this to become a position the government will take. The government shied away from it. And so we've been debating hard and and we've said constantly we think China is guilty of the most horrendous human rights abuses, not just uh, the Uyghur, which is uh, genocidal, but Hong Kong now, uh, the suppression of Hong Kong, the the Christians, the Falun Gong, they've done forced organ harvesting. Tibetans, there's there's now two million being forced through these labor camps uh, and their external aggression. So you know, we've been critical of China and I don't I don't shy away from it. I want the government now to condemn the Chinese for this uh, uh, appalling attack on free speech in the UK. Well, indeed, I mean, it took a long time to come about. The Britain joining with the EU mm. and the US and Canada to actually uh, speak up. And again, I, how, I don't know how many times as a journalist the last 25 years I've heard people say never again. Uh, and every time we mark the, the Holocaust of, of Jews from the Second World War, people say, oh, never again. It's, it's been happening on a regular basis again and again and again, even in, yes. you know, in our living memory. Um, and, and, and again, it's happening right now. But is there a certain irony that here we are imposing sanctions Sanctions on China for these uh, horrible, horrible human rights violations. Um, I mean, you know, forced abortion, genocidal abuse, no question at all what's going on there. Um, and at the same time, we seem to be following China in so many other things they do in terms of being a totalitarian police state when it comes to our handling of COVID. Do, do, do you think that, you know, this is this is where Western governments perhaps have got themselves in quite a muddle? Uh, well, yes, we have. I mean, that's because we haven't we haven't sorted out our relationship with China and we have to do it now. We can't drift uh, just following uh, business, because this is becoming a serious strategic threat. I think it's the biggest threat we face since the Cold War. Um, the difference between Russia and China today is that China has just a lot of money and is a very powerful economy. When it comes to our own domestic position, I mean, I did not support the government yesterday no. because I do not believe they should have uh, uh, continued for six months. I can understand that some of these predictions might be needed over the next month, month and a half or so, uh, but not. There's no justification, I don't think, for the six-month uh, uh, extension. And I think that we should have looked at it for a month and a half, and then and then come back to the house and said, "Well, what do you want? You know, we're going to unlock, or we're not going to unlock. The moment we're planning to unlock, but we're going to continue these these fresh powers. And I and I think they're very alien to us. We're, we're you know, with the UK, whatever else our disputes in political terms, we do we do pride ourselves of being a nation. Uh, that is reasonably liberal and free in the sense that people can go about their business without yeah. fear of being tracked all the time. Yes, and we, yes, we, 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 have, we have never had an ID card. And most of Europe, people do have ID cards. It's required. Even if you're a visitor staying for a period of time, you're required to, you know, to have your passport with you at all times. We don't require that. And, and there have been very good reasons why not. And yet we're now talking about an app, a government-sponsored health app, different from obviously the, the previous one in, in, in terms of uh, test and trace, uh, but required to basically go about our daily lives, to get into a pub, go to a concert, go to a sports match. It would show whether you've either had the vaccine, whether you've got antibodies uh, still, or whether you've tested negative in recent days. Laughably, this is being uh, discussed as part of a big review being led by Michael Gove um, uh, under the term Freedom Pass. Now, th- this is where things have gone horribly wrong, in my view. It's this idea that, 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 that freedom is something which the government bestows upon us at their, at, at, at their discretion, as opposed to something that we have and we will briefly in an emergency situation, let them take some of those freedoms away for the common good on a very short, temporary basis. We are now a year in. We've got this, these, lots of these freedoms taken away for the next, for six months onwards. And Matt Hancock, the health secretary, saying yesterday he was unable to rule 
all out, extending the powers beyond October. Um, when, when you're 18 months or two years in, you're no longer talking about um, a unique emergency situation, are you? Are these freedoms gone forever? No, they certainly won't if I have anything to do with it and others. Uh, and well, I there were think... only 36 of you last night. Yeah, Everyone but else the... sadly signed up there, apart from the Corbynistas, who thought they didn't yeah. go far enough because they don't want us to have any freedom left at Yeah, all. but there were a lot of people like me who didn't, uh, who did not vote with the government, so abstain. So you've got to add those, a significant number more. And the second bit is, of course, it hugely depends on what the opposition decides to do. At some point, they've got to ask themselves this question, what is their purpose? Is it constantly to support the government throughout everything, or is it actually to decide that they have a different view. And and I think the key thing here is that I think there is restlessness. The problem is right now, the public are being told endlessly that they're under threat, they're under threat. And of course, their their concern will be, I, I don't want to be you know threatened by the idea of catching this virus, quite rightly so. But as we, uh, you know, what was the point of the vaccines if we aren't able therefore to start returning to some of our freedoms after being vaccinated? I can understand the idea if you're traveling to a country or coming in from a country, People might want to know where you know where you come from, or that you've had a vaccine, vaccination, or had the course. So maybe you know a stamp in a passport or something as you go abroad. I can understand that. But what I don't think is workable is to have to display some kind of something I don't know, an app, or a piece of paper, or whatever to say I have been uh, I have been jabbed because I think pubs and restaurants aren't set up to do that. And I think it runs counter to the fact that the way to deal with this is to get the British public vaccinated yeah. rather than to decide which, those who haven't been vaccinated have to show something. We, well, uh, and, and which people are doing. I mean, we've seen, I mean, all, it's almost 100% in the age group my parents are in, in their 70s. People are going, yeah, I'm at risk, want to be out and about, carrying on living my life, let's get vaccinated. 22% of people in England uh, aged under 60 have already had the jab because of health reasons. I mean, there is no shortage of people wanting to take up this jab, people queuing up for it. Um, just finally, let me ask you about the COVID, um, uh, the export ban uh, issue. Uh, Germany in the Netherlands and Belgium saw sense yesterday, it would appear, at this leader, this meeting of, uh, of European leaders at the European Council yesterday, and it's carrying on today. They basically urged the EU to back down from this threat to ban uh, vaccine exports. France, Spain and Italy, they're demanding that the, the EU backs Ursula von der Leyen on this. Um, do you think that we are now not going to see a full-on vaccine war, or do you think they've just seen sense, which is that, well, you know, you stop vaccines coming to us, and the reality is we will stop the uh, the goods, that like the lipids that go into your vaccines uh, from arriving with you. Do you think we've stepped back from a full vaccine war? Yeah, I think the European Union blinked yesterday and I think it was a good thing. Um, I think some common sense has prevailed. Uh, they dress this up as not being anti-British by saying it's those who've done well on, you know, you're getting punished by the EU if you've done well on getting people vaccinated. It does seem to be bizarre. I think, I think the problem we've got here is that uh, having stepped back now, they, they, they'll they come back to this again and again. And the reason is they're lashing around because their their own failure uh, to be able to have a, got proper contracts with these companies and to have got them early enough to get early supply. Yeah. Uh, and they're now blaming everybody else for that. I mean, I saw that they raided a, a, an AstraZeneca factory under the orders of the EU about two days ago in Italy yeah. and then put out to the media, oh, you know, they've been stockpiling millions of vaccines going to the UK. In fact, it turns out they were all going to the EU and those that weren't were going to uh, to the third world. Yeah. So they've had to backtrack on that. And this is this is more about the EU in a uh, the commission in a mess with under fire from governments and from people and trying to pick a scapegoat, which is the UK. They need to calm down and, you know, keep talking. Absolutely. Just finally, in terms of calming down and keeping talking, what do you make of the uh, protests outside of West Yorkshire School uh, yesterday, uh, condemned by the Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson, as completely unacceptable, after a teacher was suspended after uh, showing uh, images of Mohammed in a class uh, of 13-year-olds whilst having a conversation about blasphemy laws and well, blasphemy and freedom uh, of speech uh, and debate. Uh, what do you make of that? Who's in the right? Who's in the wrong? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, I'm with uh, teachers who have to teach. I mean, you know, there's plenty of things that we don't like to see and plenty of things that we disagree with, you know, in faith, in religion, in our daily lives, you know. Uh, and if we ban everything and stop everything that different groups uh, don't like, then it's going to be very difficult for teachers to teach. Teachers teach, but we must trust most teachers do it in a context and are very good at explaining to children what they're doing, why they're doing it. Uh, you know, all of that has to be done properly. But having said that, the idea that we attack this poor teacher who was only going about attempting to do a good job, 
I think is ultimately shameful. And I think that the government needs to, as I understand they are doing, stand up to protect that teacher. And I think communities across the UK, no matter what their beliefs, their whatever, must understand that education is a process properly done. It's enlightening. And it's very important that therefore children are taught properly. Thank you very much indeed, Sir Douglas Smith, former Conservative Party leader. Thank you very much for that.